you guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Inflow Podcast. If you're new here, my name is Ani B. This is Nadine. And today we are back with another chill couch combo. You guys already know the drill. And before we even get into what we're talking about today, we want to say thank you so much. And honestly, I kind of feel like we say thank you every episode, <laughs> but there's always something to be grateful for. And this week specifically, we gained thousands of followers on Instagram. And so we have a bunch of new faces. And so yeah just thanks for following us that's pretty dope <laughs> yeah thank you so much anyone that's new and, and don't know us we love you and we hope you stay for the ride yeah we're really excited about it um and for everybody who's been tagging us and talking about glowy girl summer like that is exactly what we wanted because i don't know i just feel like that is what we've been calling it and what we feel like the summertime is going to embody for us personally and we're like why the hell would we not include everyone else in this mm -hmm. why can't we all be glowy girls this summer like absolutely yes so i'm happy that you guys are already feeling the vibes of that tan skin glossy lips curly hair like everything is just giving natural beauty this summer and i just think that that's so awesome so okay Anyways, 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 let's get into what we're going to talk about today. I'm today, so <laughs> we are talking about standards, Oop. ladies and gentlemen. Oop. Standards. Standards mm -hmm. in not just relationships, but also in your work life, yep. in your personal life, boundaries with people, like standards in general. Yeah. And that's huge. It's very broad, but there's just so much to get into. And I definitely feel like that ties into this glowy girl summer thing that we have going on because something about being in this little era that we're in, it's like not just anybody has access to this expensive ass energy mm -hmm. it's gonna cost you something so what are these standards that we're setting for ourselves like what do they look like exactly you know? um okay so just to start off in standards in general i mean just as as broad as it sounds i think your standards are a clear reflection of how much self-esteem and how much self-love you have personally sure um absolutely uh that's your number one rule is how much self-love and self-love doesn't mean you know taking care of yourself on a saturday and having self-care i mean that's that's great and all self-love but genuinely truly down to your core do you love yourself are you fulfilled okay. with your life are you happy with what you've accomplished are you yeah. prepared to you know push away anything else that doesn't really serve you and like walk away from things that don't just because you love yourself enough to know the difference that it's not meant for you to be in your life mm -hmm. um where are you willing to draw the line is the line really easy to cross is it difficult to get to these are all questions you should be asking yourself and i think personally for me i have to be super raw and honest and say that in my dating life, I have not had the highest of standards. And I, I wouldn't, I mean, I'm 23, Annika's 23. And as we're going to grow, we're going to learn. And some of you may be older and may have better dating experience or work life experience or friendship experiences. And even my friendships weren't really that high value. Um, but it wasn't up until I changed the value of myself and what I agreed on my value of myself and my worth that my standards started to change and my life started to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So what are some like non-negotiables for you right now and things that you set for yourself as standards Ani? honestly i feel like i have quite a few non-negotiables and i think that that's kind of gotten me to the place that i am with it i honestly know exactly what would be required of somebody to to be able to even take me out on one date like it's very like i'm just very choosy with it and i have the right to be just yeah. like you do just like anyone else does and um yeah i feel like the way i see it is i've worked way too damn hard to get my energy the way to the place that it is to get my security with myself to the place that it is and my level of confidence to where it's at and so to just let anybody have access to that and hold on to it and be able to affect it it's like that's not free at all like i i won't just let anybody have that access so i would definitely say that you have to have some sort of goal in mind right like i'm not just going to go on a date with somebody that doesn't know what they want to do with their life that's just like sitting around and doing fucking nothing like that would never happen i think that you need to be driven and inspired and to and and honestly i think the biggest thing is to be pouring into yourself enough because you love yourself yeah because I think it's so important, especially for like a male to have enough self-love to like take care of themselves. And I think that I've seen through the eyes of my friends and just from experience that there are a lot of men that don't care that much about themselves. And so they will not, you know, be pursuing their dreams or like taking action on the things that they want to take action on. And I also feel like the lack of self-love that men can have and the lack of like self-knowing uh, 
also kind of pours into how they treat women too. Absolutely. You know, because as a man, if you don't have enough confidence and self-security, it's really easy for you to attack the woman that you're with because, Mm -hmm. you know, we're all mirrors, we're all projecting. And so it's easy for for you to see your beautiful girlfriend or whatever and her be, you know, out and living her life and thriving and blah, blah, blah. And then that piss you off or that make you feel scarce and insecure. Mm -hmm. And so that's definitely something that is a non-negotiable for me. Like, I just know for sure that I could never would never ever tolerate somebody who couldn't handle me being exactly the way that i am like if you can't have a hot girlfriend don't have one sorry (laughs) but this also goes for the men too like um you know like is is your woman like super insecure Mm -hmm. and and can't uphold herself and doesn't have self-love like it's not here to just attack a gender it's a it's to really bring light to what is it that you want personally for yourself and how you want to be treated Mm -hmm. um you know i feel like I feel like even even in my dating scene personally for me, I have to kind of sit here and reflect on and be like, how much evaluating of another person have I done before I find myself already getting an attachment to them? Mm. You know, how much do they even really uh, like have my core values? Do they even really share my same traits or my same things that I'm excited about or things that I find as now negotiables like are are they driven are are they genuinely a happy person or are they just kind of putting up a front um how easy is it to take nadine out on a date you know and these are all things that you have to or you out on a date like these are all things we have to reflect on and really come to a conclusion like kind of writing them down so that way we're not caught off guard just because we see somebody who fits our mold in a physical aspect and i think that's what we get tripped up on sometimes too Mm -hmm. i saw this video of this girl saying something talking about like you know golden rules of dating that i that have never steered her wrong and one of the first thing that she said is like do you even actually like this person no for real like but like can we just draw it back for a second and and reel it in like do you even like them like what is there to like about this person can you like list out a list of things that makes them exceptional and most of the time i feel like girls would be like it's a hard um well he's cute like and that's probably it you know what i mean and so that's something really big to consider because I think that when we put our emotions into it and we start to like feel something maybe we haven't felt in a while or somebody makes us feel special or seen or heard, we can like let that be a fog for us. We can let that kind of blind us yeah. to our to the things that we have as standards and things that we want to have in a partner. And so don't allow lust or um, infatuation draw you away from the things that you know are requirements to be with you right there's another thing that she said too and it's like how easy is it to actually hang out with you which is what you said right Mm -hmm. and she's like is your time more valuable or is their time more valuable because if they hit you up and they ask you what you're doing and you make yourself available every time you're teaching them that their time is more valuable than yours but it's not even the fact that they're asking you what you're doing and you're you like accepting it it's that no i'm actually so busy in my life and i'm so fulfilled in my life that it's actually genuinely not i'm not available all the time like it's not because i'm, I'm doing it just to try to play hardball because it, you don't have to do that if you're a mature being you want to see somebody you can see somebody that's yeah. no problem but if he is asking you wid at 9 p.m at night and you're acting like you don't have a morning routine to get to in the morning i'm pissed at you yeah yeah, yeah. and also if if a guy texts you wid <laughs> why are you talking to him <laughs> like I don't know. what i'm sorry i don't know <laughs> that was a mistake <laughs> oh my god because i was lonely and okay <laughs> also another thing loneliness is not real you should be so fulfilled in your life so that you don't feel lonely you have so many beautiful relationships this is partly me speaking to myself okay just mm-hmm. just chill i have ani okay <laughs> and that's it and so <laughs> and so yeah I'm totally fine now. But even then, your relationship with yourself is important. And I think that it's a really easy thing for people who have had this specific type of attachment style to the minute that they have alone time, they're like, I'm lonely, I'm bored, I don't know what to do with myself. No, I'm sorry, but I can tell you from the other side, the grass is greener when you actually love to hang out with yourself. Because Mm -hmm. I valued my alone time so much that it actually took me some effort to like, 
be excited to hang out with people again like if exactly. i'm being super honest with you yeah. and so yeah like there is a relationship to be had with yourself right like taking the time to actually do things that you love to do on your own and getting to know who you are because let's be fucking honest no matter how close you are with your best friend or your family or your your spouse nobody knows who you really are completely 100 percent other than yourself Mm -hmm. and some most of the time people don't even know who they are exactly and it's like how can you find somebody that really matches you if you don't know if you don't know who you are because there's going to be a a, a, there's going to be some sort of things like okay like everybody has a different set of bare minimums right Mm -hmm. the higher your bare minimums are the better okay because we could start off there because if you are impressed by a guy because he opens your door and he pays for your meal on the first day i'm sorry that is a bare minimum mm-hmm. your first mistake is getting impressed okay think about where your your bare minimums are and then they have to surpass that to impress you for men and for women okay mm-hmm. men you could have total bare minimum qualities for a woman too depending on what you feel is necessary to fit in the mold of your life and what you want yeah. but the fact that you're not being picky and choosy is your first mistake because yeah. it takes so long probably in the between of getting somebody else to be kind of interested in you and then having a conversation and I get it ever since COVID it's been really difficult to kind of formulate relationships with people and so we're going dating online and all of that but it shouldn't matter that it's taking a while I feel like maybe somewhere along the lines in our society we have just decided that like being alone is wrong or like not being with somebody is wrong or like not being with somebody and having kids by this age is wrong no that's wrong don't listen to them (laughs) because what's more important is you waiting and you making sure that you're protecting your own heart because if you're just going to allow anybody to infiltrate that you're going to put yourself out on the line and hurt your heart over and over and over again until you become a bitter bitch or a bitter guy and you're not going to become that person because you're taking care of yourself you're taking care of your heart and um yeah that's about it i agree with that and standards are important because if you like like we said earlier if you just let anybody have access to you consider it like a contamination okay and i have been contaminated recently like we went out on my birthday weekend and i drank a little bit and you know we had a little bender stayed out super late and i was contaminated from that experience for a week why because sometimes when i drink alcohol and it like reactivates my ego state because newsflash if you drink alcohol it activates your ego state like that's just a fact so it activated my ego state I feel like I haven't really been in that space for a long time because I hadn't had alcohol for like three or four months since and so to be like kind of in that experience and we drank two nights in a row which was kind of like crazy for me anyway it put me in this fog and it was really hard for me to get out of it I feel like I instantly like kind of got addicted to that feeling of validation and wanting to like feed into this ego ego craving and so I was you know more on my Instagram page more looking at who was watching my stories more Mm. looking at my likes more wanting to feel validated in a bunch of different ways and I'm like this is not who I am and so I had to snap myself out of it and seriously cleanse the shit out of my energy and finally come back to who I am and be like why am I pouring in all of this energy caring about who's liking my story who's hitting me up who am I talking to versus how much work I could get done how much of a visionary I could be how creative I can be and pour into those different outlets as well because that energy would it would just multiply my life experience by a million okay so Ani clearly has a set of standards of like not wanting to go out and have drinking this was the repercussion of her not upholding her standards exactly. and that can formulate in relationships that can formulate in your job like let's just say if you don't set a standard like hey by the way i don't work on saturdays or i don't work on saturdays and sundays i'm here from nine to five between monday through friday i don't work on these days mm-hmm. but somebody comes in of, of your job and is like hey like i really need you to come in on this day blah blah blah. this is happening this is whatever you're allowed to say no just like you're allowed to say no in any aspect of your life ask yourself when the question comes to you you are never immediately expected to give an answer you shouldn't you should be able to really digest it feel it is this something that i could that i could do is this a weekend where i can actually give myself a little bit more time in this is whatever whatever the case may be you are allowed to say yes or no Mm -hmm. and at no point should you be making any decisions based on feeling this like yucky feeling or i have to do this or or else i'm gonna get fired or, or whatever get fired then because your life is 
not to it's not working 24 7 your life is not meant to be running around off of everybody else's favors and needs and it's about your needs and about what you need so i agree with that and it's important especially in your workplace because if you don't have boundaries then you don't have balance and mm-hmm. if you don't have balance then you're gonna hate your fucking life <laughs> and that's really hard to do when you have to work a full-time job that you don't love that much right and and i think real estate is a good example of that because real estate is a job that could require you 24 7 like or literally 25 8 right if you let it but there are agents and people in the industry who set their own schedule and they actually block out one to two days out of the week and they literally will not use their phone for any real estate because they have to because if you don't set boundaries for what days are off then your phone will ring every single day every single hour and you will not have a break and so it's one of those industries that like kind of makes you realize how important it is to have boundaries and standards for your work life because because if you don't, then you can easily feel like you're drowning in it. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's a good place or a great example of like a, having boundaries in, in your work life. But um, I also think that boundaries for friendships is like so important, just as important as rela- regular like romantic relationships. Because I feel like if you're like in the early stages of dating someone or you're single and like you maybe go on dates here and there, most of your time is probably spent with your friends and the way that you allow your friends to treat you and the way that you allow your friends to be like in your vicinity and in your energetic bubble is really important like who are these people Mm. like do you like who are they yeah you know what i mean yeah because if i look back on some of the people that i was friends with for a long time like what was i doing Mm -hmm. sorry like no shade but like what was i doing like i was allowing people to make me feel less than because of what i was doing like for most of my life, I was friends with with girls that could not handle how much I was doing and made me feel bad about the things that I was doing, right? Like I, when I first got into fitness and, and started doing that, the people I was friends with made fun of me in front of my face for posting my gym videos. Mm. Yeah, while, while I hung out with them, they would talk shit to me and laugh at me about mm. it. And like even... What's their address? <laughs> <laughs> and even um, some of the friends that I had not even that long ago, like I couldn't talk about my successes and my wins that were happening for in flow and for like my own personal stuff because every time that I would bring it up or I would be excited to talk about it, it was like, oh, that's so cool. You know, and <laughs> that's not how it's supposed to feel. Mm-hmm. The only reason why people ever make you feel that way is because it's bringing up something in them that they're not doing and it hurts. Yeah. And it wasn't until you fully saw yourself because Mm -hmm. you wouldn't have probably broken off those relationships until you finally fully saw yourself. And then you're like, okay, these are now my non-negotiable standards. You're not meeting my standards. I'm okay with you walking out of my life. Yeah, That's the difference between a high value woman and a not a high value woman and a high value man versus not a high value man. Mm -hmm. How much value do you fully feel like you possess? Because your value is your power and you are powerless without any form of value to yourself and so yeah I think it's totally fine to walk away from people and keep your inner circle small and to make sure that you are hanging out with the right people because you are who you hang out with those energies will ultimately affect you even if you think that you don't oh I'm completely different from these friends even though they drink and do this and um they like to party till really late at night and they're not really driven but I'm the only driven one let me tell you something you are way better off being in a crowd of people who are going off doing amazing things, who are pursuing something, who are passionate about something because energy really matters. And so if you're sacrificing your energy thinking that you're powerful enough to be hanging around these people who still aren't encouraged themselves, it's it's going to affect you negatively. It's, yeah. it's just, it's like, what's the word? It's inevitable. And the reason for that is because if you think that you can hang out with all those people and be still like at a higher vibration than them, you're lying to yourself because you physically and mentally and emotionally and energetically have to lower your vibration to meet people where they're at if you're going to be around them all the time, right? Like think about when you turn on a, a, a negative show, like something that is scary or whatever, right? Like in order to like 
in order to understand the information that's being shown to you, you have to tune into that frequency to like get it. And so the same thing when you're hanging out with certain types of people, like, yeah, you could be this love and light, energetic, bubbly, whatever person and feel like you are so above the things that your friends are doing. But if you're around them and you are tuning into that radio station in that place that they live, I'm sorry, but you are being affected by that energy. It's just it's just like the law mm-hmm. right that's just what happens it's the law <laughs> yeah, <I did. laughs> that's her thumbnail <laughs> i also don't want anybody listening to ever be scared of being the least accomplished person in the room because that is actually such a great place to be i would much rather be in a room filled with a bunch of people who are doing way more than me than to be the only person in a room doing anything absolutely and I've been in way too many rooms where I've been that person and so now I'm striving and I will always strive to be the person that is one of the least accomplished because think about how much more you would do if you were surrounded by people who were doing so much like you would wake up so motivated and it also just like reminds you that it's not that fucking hard Mm -hmm. you know because everyone around you is doing it yeah and when we say like doing things and being accomplished it doesn't even mean your career so to speak Mm -hmm. like it doesn't mean that you have to have a million dollars in the bank to feel accomplished it's like are you cooking your meals are you Mm -hmm. do you have hobbies that you like to do are you doing things that really spice up the mind body and soul are you do you like to read books do you we we talk about this all the time are you doing the yoga that you're supposed to do are you doing the self-work because that's what makes you an interesting person Mm -hmm. is when you're somebody who's really putting in the effort to making you better and i just cannot stand being around people who are not in the mood to make themselves better they're just happy with being where they're at and where they're at is really boring boring. (laughs) i agree i agree and this is literally the season to figure out what the hell you want in your life figure out the type of people that can have access to your energy because we're cultivating this crazy ass magic energy and i'm sorry but it's not free you can't just do all of this internal work and build this beautiful aura and just be like everybody uh everyone who's ever wronged me like have access to this i'm sorry but we are reserved with it it is expensive and it is very valuable and so really figure out what the hell it will require of a person person Mm -hmm. to have access to you because like you need to have friendships that you truly value that make you feel seen and heard but also that are reciprocated Mm -hmm. right like I'm not going to be the friend like I used to be a long time ago where I was just the person that people called up when they needed to vent about things and then they'd be like thank you for listening hang up and then not speak to me until the next time they had to vent about something no I'm done with that and I will never be that person again because if you have access to my time and my energy it will be reciprocated I I will leave there leave that exchange feeling fulfilled mm-hmm. and and feeling good inside and I think that that's a huge way to know if a relationship romantic or friendly or whatever is is good for you because when you leave hanging out with that person how do you feel like do you feel like I feel so good I feel so whole I feel so charged or do you feel very drained and exhausted and like fuck that was really hard to do yeah you know yeah your body's always communicating with you Mm -hmm. and uh, another thing that I wanted to add was that if you because it's difficult right it's hard to just stop caring and being a people pleaser or like not having boundaries and all these things it's it's a really it's a shake to your core it's really asking you to do some introspection and typically the things that make it hard is like we look for things that we've probably lacked in our childhood right and that's an attachment style so you have to figure out your attachment style um for me i knew that i was an anxious attachment style so i would go above and beyond uh because i was afraid of people some sort of like abandoning me in some sort so i would do the most to make sure that people felt like I was somebody who was a caretaker and who was a lover and who was a nurturer and who would be there for them and who would support them. But I am that regardless. So I don't need to prove anybody that I am that until they show me that they are worthy of Mm. it. So because I know who I am, I don't need to prove to anyone other than myself. And I've done that already. I know how I'm capable in a relationship. I know how capable I am in a friendship. And it wasn't until I had valuable friendships and valuable relationships in my life where I finally actually brought that out of me. So continuing to be in a vibrational state with people who were trying to teach me and project to me and tell me who I was and I was believing it told me that I was not secure with myself. So that's a period app. 
Me, on the other hand, I have been an avoidant attachment style my whole life. And so I am the type of person that I would consider to be hyper independent. And so, yeah, I do. I I think I've done the opposite. I'm like, I don't need you. I don't need anybody. I don't need. I got me and me in the world and me versus the world. Like, you know what I mean? And so I think that I created this like really big large wall around myself and so it was really hard for me to let anybody in and I was like just not um just not the minute that anybody showed me any sign of anything like I was dipping out real quick and so for me now trying to find a val- a balance between like what my values are but also not being so hyper independent that like I spoil relationships and that I don't allow myself to feel loved and and cared for by others like it's definitely been a difficult thing to adjust to um, but it's so interesting how the way that you're raised affects how you are because Mm -hmm. we were raised differently by different people and like I can definitely see like the parts of my mom that shine through me and and you know she if she heard me saying this she would be like hell yeah like I'm proud that I made you that way and I think that it's awesome that I'm like this really independent person and that I've really taught myself to take care of myself but there is also a fine line where you need to be protected and reserved but not so protected and reserved that you never allow anybody have access to you ever Mm -hmm. yeah that's important that's really important and another thing that I was going to actually touch on that I forgot about when it came to dating and standards and relationships is that you have your list of set of non-negotiables but you're somebody who is being super toxic and like thinking about your non-negotiables being a physical attribute or and this goes for men or women like physical attributes and things like that like those are things that you can kind of pick or leave like somebody treating you really amazing and really giving you value that's unforeseen and anywhere else and it's really somebody who's fully intending to make your life better whether it's through friendships whether it's a job opportunity you could tell right off the bat there are things that you can pick off the list that aren't that important but your list of non-negotiables will be your core value your most important Mm -hmm. things yeah I agree I like that because like (laughs) we're not saying she has to have a badass and she has to have this and that you know like that's what she does (laughs) that's not what we're trying to say what we're trying to say is like the deep down core things because or like he has to have brown hair you know it would be nice and it'd be curly with green eyes but it's but not a requirement. it's not a requirement <sighs> yeah you're right okay, it's whatever. not yeah it's we're telling not. the people it's not it's not so what we're trying to say (laughs) is to consider your deep down core values because no matter what no matter how cute somebody is if they're a completely different person that has a different set of beliefs and values than you how far do you actually want to take it like how far do you want that to go because let's say it goes amazing and you guys click and whatever but then what after that dude don't even get me sorry well, then what after that when you are living together and they're sitting on the couch eating Cheetos every day while you're working your ass off building your dreams? Like there is a reason why people don't work for you and that looks can be deceiving. One thing I will leave you with is that if you think that you can change somebody based on how much you love them, you are setting yourself for the biggest failure I've ever seen in my life people will show you who they are right off the bat they will tell you who they are right off the bat and I know it can be intimidating sometimes when we're kind of thinking about our list of requirements and what we want and what our intentions are when we're getting into a relationship or a friendship or whatever it may be Mm -hmm. it can be difficult trying to have that conversation and trying to uphold those standards that's going to come from an organic place when you feel safe enough with a person if you don't feel safe enough to even just acknowledge what you feel and what you want that's a big red flag walk away yeah walk away (laughs) run away yeah for real for real okay well that was funny pretty awesome yeah yeah i really like this i think this was really good um I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you guys enjoyed this little spiel of what our standards look like. And I think that our standards are always growing. And you know what's so interesting? Every episode that we've had has been like a different theme that we're experiencing Mm -hmm. because we're really only talking about things that are actually like prevalent in our lives during that week. And so the last one, we really were diving into the feeling of freedom and being like, you know alive and not feeling like you're chained or constricted to anything and then this week we're like dude we need to redefine what our standards are like who is deserving of our energy who is deserving of our time and so we feel so inspired to talk about that with you guys so 
anyway we hope you guys enjoyed this episode i feel like we i feel like we said so much value absolutely i really want you guys to comment your non-negotiables yeah what are your non-negotiables that way we can all use them to inspire each other yeah to uphold them and make our own list because if you guys go home and just write down a journal like let's just say even my girlies that have never been in a relationship before right you could still come up with things and even look on youtube videos on what other people's non-negotiables are to get you an idea and of course boys like if you have a list of non-negotiables that you want in a woman you're allowed to have those you're encouraged to have those because it matters um Mm -hmm. write down exactly what what you would want and then you can make a little fun list on the physical attributes that you would like and if you end up manifesting both props to you boys and girls i love that (laughs) anyways you guys if you enjoyed this episode please do give it a thumbs up give us a comment of what your non-negotiables are maybe leave us a rating on apple Podcasts and spotify and share this with somebody who you think needs a re-up on their standards Anyway, we will see you next Monday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't be late. Don't be late. Bye. Bye.